morning all. Today's yin class. It will be a 25 minute video, but I want you to pause in between each pose and hold it for several minutes. This is a favorite of all of ours, wall yin. So beginning in a wide legged forward fold, drop down, you can have a soft bend in the knees, I'm not leaning into the wall, and I let my head completely hang. Set a timer for yourself. Set a little bit of soft music in the background that will allow you to drift into this pose. Two minutes and two minutes only. To come out of the pose, gently, slowly bend your knees and come down on to, to see it. Allow yourself to rest in between each of these poses for one minute or longer until you feel restored and ready for the next pose. Pose number two, seated as I am against the wall. Not tight into the wall, leave a little bit of room. Take your right arm, bring it straight out behind you or to whatever degree it comes, don't worry. And then rotate and take your upper body away from the pose until you get that strong pull over the front of the shoulder and the top of the arm and the compression in the back of the right shoulder. To a sensation level of seven out of 10. Once you've achieved that, set your timer, close your eyes, and allow two minutes to pass. To come out of the pose, drop the hand, and just come into a seated position for a full minute of rebound. Take that pose to the uh, left side, so turn it around, sitting close to the wall but not completely tight. Take the arm out from behind and press the palm into the wall. But the, the rest of the arm can be slightly um, a gap between your arm and the wall. And then rotate it to the right in the chest until you get as strong a sensation as you're able to handle. If you find the pose, set your timer, close your eyes and allow yourself to drift for the length of this pose. Two minutes each side. Rebound, just allow the hand to drop. Stay where you are in this seated position for a full minute or until you feel the sensations subside. Pose number three is Sphinx with your legs up against the up against up along the wall. So bring your left knee back tight close to the wall and your toes going up the wall. Come onto your hands and knees, bring your right knee back and then allow the rest of the body to drop down. Bring your elbows out in front directly underneath your shoulders. Relax the glutes, relax the thighs, allow the deep curve in the lumbar spine. Close your eyes and breathe into that sensation. This can be very strong. So please just take this to where you're able. If this is too much, you can widen the elbows and drop down ever so slightly and you can build yourself up to this level. Hold this again for another two minutes. Close your eyes. You can allow the head to drop. When that two minutes is up, bring your bolster or a cushion and bring it to where your elbows were. So directly underneath the shoulders once more, but you're a little bit higher. So the curve has increased. Again, drop the head. 
Relax the soft body. Breathe into your pose. Pause the tape. Spend another two minutes here. Be very mindful coming out of this pose. Slowly take your hands apart. Take your elbows wide on the bolster or cushion and roll it slowly away from you until you can rest your head to one side, arms down by your side. And then take one of your legs off the wall and slide the knee up just out from the hip beside you. Spend as long as you need to in rebound. From here, allow yourself a minute in child's pose, which is with knees together, feet together. Drop down as far as you can towards your heels. Let your chest melt over your thighs. Drop your forehead onto the mat. Bring your hands down either side towards your feet. Let your shoulders round and drop towards the floor. Give yourself another minute or two here. You can set the timer. Or you can just allow the, the sensations to subside. When they have, bring your hands and push yourself up. From here, we're going to come into King Edward. So it's tricky. We want to put that left foot up the wall like before, like in Sphinx, with the knee down on, uh, on the mat and on a cushion. So I have extra cushioning underneath uh, my mat and that's very useful. With your right foot, you're going to take it and place it in between your two hands. Make sure that you have enough room to drop down into the hips. So the front knee goes beyond the ankle and you drop down into this back left hip. You feel a strong pull in the connective tissue of all the quad muscles and a strong pull in the hip flexor. Again, two minutes here is sufficient. This is a strong pose. Hands inside the right foot and on the mat like I have now is option number one. Not saying it's easy, but for some people, they may be looking for a bit more. And as the pose progresses, you may look for a bit more. If you bring the right hand outside the, the right foot, you'll feel the pose deepen. You can hang out here for a few more seconds or stay here for the, until the pose ends. Final level of intensity, option three, is to come up onto the right thigh and hang out here. And the stretch will increase, increase, increase. Please be mindful to keep it at number seven. Don't go looking for sensations when they're already there. It's only if they fade, then you can try and search for them and push it a little more. Drop down onto your hands and come out of the pose. And I just like to come to seated against a wall. Stretch my legs out in front and allow myself a minute or two of rebound. Before I make my way into that pose on the other side, so back onto hands and knees, bring the right knee tight into the wall, the right foot up along the wall. Don't tuck the toes, let the fronts of the toes rest on the wall. And then bring your left foot forward and drop down. And here you might have a clearer view of how my knee is beyond my ankle, allowing me to drop into that hip. You can begin hands inside, you can progress to hand outside, and you can progress to full. But it's very, very strong pose. Two minutes only. And then to come out rebound. Don't you come. Come to seated. Breathe. For the next pose, I'm going to show 
show you this which is in this little inlet in my house. I just happen to have one and it's very, very handy. Sit on a bolster, blocks, books, or whatever you have, and bring it about a foot and a half, about 50 centimeters out from the wall. You're gonna come and turn and turn into the wall. So come and sit on your bolster. Crisscross your ankles in front and let your knees drop down, hopefully to the floor. This is an upper body anahata against the wall pose, so it isn't really about uh, the lower half, so get comfortable here. You're going to bring your arms up and here, because I have a wall either side, I can really drop my chest. Turn my head to the side, drop my chest, close my eyes, and imagine my heart is melting towards the wall. So the space in between my shoulder blades is constantly being drawn closer and closer to the wall. When you think you have this position and you can fiddle around until you get it, press your timer for two minutes and stay here. For a rebound, just come up slowly, drop your hands, and give yourself a few breaths. Next pose, I'm going to come and turn my mat a long ways against the wall, so I'll need a, a wider wall. Have my bolster handy. Sit side onto the wall like we always do and kick your legs up. Walk as close into the wall as you can and drop back. Here, take the legs as wide as they will go, as wide as they will comfortably go. This is strong. This is stronger than it normally is when you're seated. There is a huge pull right up the seam of your leggings. For this pose, I would hang here a lot longer. You don't even have to set a timer. Just allow yourself to drift off, either to music in the background or to silence. Close your eyes and just get deep. What you'll notice is your heels will slowly drop in their own time, completely by themselves. So wait for that. After a few minutes, if you have a bolster, you can intensify this pose even more by popping the bolster in between the inner thighs. And there's an additional weight encouraging the, the feet to the floor. Gravity is at play here as well, so this pose continues and continues. You can bring your arms wherever you like, out by your shoulders, up along, from the head, anywhere that gives you comfort. Close your eyes, turn your attention inwards to those target areas. The inner knees comes in at the, to play here. So be very careful when you're coming out of this pose. Lift the bolster and just let it roll onto your tummy. Very slowly, and you might even have to help yourself out of this pose, bend one knee and draw it into centre. Bend the other knee. Slowly bringing them back in together. You can set the bolster on top of your feet, which is quite nice and take your legs straight up, for legs up the wall. And this is your rebound position. Hang out here for as long as you need to. Next pose, we're going to do um, the figure four against the wall and then into twist on each side. So begin with the right leg. 
Take the right leg, the right ankle across the left thigh. Now your bum is going to have to come and lift off the mat and then you drop it down. It may not reach all the way down. There is a space between my sacrum and the floor and that's fine. The only time it isn't fine is if it's causing you any discomfort, in which case you would wriggle your way back and your bum will flatten. But if it isn't annoying you, stay in tight. What you're looking for here is down the back of the right thigh and into the right glute. Pull in nice and strong. Try and keep the foot of the right leg engaged here rather than just flopping and the, and, the, and the ankle opening to the side. Keep that foot strong and it's healthier for the knee. Again, spend two minutes here or longer. It's up to you. From here, take your arms out to the side and walk your left foot down your wall until your right foot lands on the floor and your left ankle reaches the floor. Here you're in a twist. Take the bolster if you have one and place it over your left upper arm. Turn your head in whatever direction you like and hold the twist here. Again, this is a stronger twist than normal. Set your timer. Let yourself drift. When the time comes for rebound, take off the bolster, release your legs and bring them up against the wall. You can take a little rebound here, or you can go straight into the figure four on the left side. Make sure this foot is engaged. Spend two minutes here. When that's up, walk the right foot, let the left hip lift and lift and lift until you make contact with the floor. Bring the bolster over to the other side. Place it on the left upper arm. You can hold the knee here, you can hold the foot. Time for a rebound. This is the last rebound, your Shavasana. So you can have Shavasana legs up against the wall. Ankles crossed and knees against the wall. Just take your time, close your practice. So that's just a routine, short routine, that you can expand yourself at home. Namaste. Enjoy.